Chris Sheeran, Frank Isola back here at Barclays Center with the Brooklyn Nets postgame show. And the Nets get swept by the Celtics, 116-112, the final here in Game 4 tonight at Barclays Center. It's the fourth time in the Nets' NBA history that they've been swept in a seven-game series. And Frank, just like the previous three games, even though the Nets never had the lead in this one, they had a chance to win this game. Yeah, and Jason Tatum fouled out with 2.48 to go, and you were wondering where was Boston going to get its offense from? Jalen Brown with a big play, and then, of course, the putback by Al Horford. All series long, the Boston Celtics on the offensive glass. Kevin Durant at the free throw line, 22 seconds to go. If he makes both, it's a one-point game. Plenty, You're going to have to start playing the foul game. But with Kevin Durant out there, he could make plays. And Kevin Durant had missed a three with 50 seconds to go, which would have tied it. And here he is, second free throw, 22 seconds to go. And here are the Nets, I don't understand. And look at Kyrie right here. After the miss, you have to take out Al Harford. You cannot allow him to get the put back there, and you got to send him to the line. Where is the resistance? That that reminds me a lot of Game One. You got to grab him right there with Jason Tatum doing the spinorama around Kyrie Irving as well. But yeah, Al Horford laying that in, and that was the deciding decisive basket. It, it's really incredible. I think if you look at the last 45 seconds of Game One, obviously then the fourth quarter of Game two and then the two games here in Brooklyn how frustrating was this series for right. the Brooklyn Nets you know and I'll, I'll tell you I'll say this you know last year we sat here after game seven and you thought about what could have been if guys didn't get hurt I really thought the Nets were the best team Milwaukee went on to win the series and Milwaukee had gotten out class in the first two games but Kyrie got hurt and then you had James Harden on one leg right to me that last year was what could have been this year is about what needs to happen because this is unacceptable. This cannot continue next year. This has to start on day one of training camp where the team needs to be all in from start to finish. You got whoever's coming back, and Kevin Durant's going to be one of them who's going to be back. We know that, which is a great starting point. It needs to start in training camp, and you need to get that core group of players together playing for 60 games. We can't have guys saying, come playoff time, well, we need time to gel. That's what training camp is about. That's what the 82-game regular season about. It's not about getting that done in the playoffs. The Nets are too good. This was unacceptable. A four game sweep. And we heard Kyrie Irving say that after game three in his post game press conference about the Celtics. They've been gelling since Christmas and the Nets have been fluid. And you brought it up in the pregame show before game three how fluid this season yeah. has been for the Nets, starting with Kyrie Irving only being able to be a part time player. And that's why all series long, so we have a Boston Celtic team which over the final 36 games, 32 games of the regular season went 26 and 6. For the most part, the team was together. They lost Robert Williams. He came back. That's a role player for the team. But they rode the back of two great players, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Marcus Smart, who really started to emerge. So at moments in this series, when Boston needed to make plays, things needed to happen, they relied on their on their stars. And they also, there was a game plan. There was an idea because they'd been playing together for so long. Do not tell me the regular season does not matter. The regular season matters. You can't treat it like it's a part-time existence because you know what happens when you do that? You get swept. And that's Kevin Durant we're talking about. That's one of the greatest players in the history of the sport. And now last year was disappointing. This is unacceptable. The Nets are better than this. It has to be better. It has to be better. We'll see if it happens next year with this Brooklyn Nets team. Let's Before we get there, let's take a look at down the stretch here in the fourth quarter and how the Celtics were able to hang on to this one late. We start 107-99, and Kevin Durant keeping the Nets in this game, Frank, cutting it to six. And then down the stretch, there was a lot of Kevin Durant. It was a lot lot of Kyrie Irving here Kyrie makes the shot which on the drive great drive by him which makes it a four-point game 107 103 there just over three and a half minutes to play Marcus Smart then goes inside almost loses it gathers and hits a big bucket there to make it 109 103 Boston and this and this for Jason Tatum. by the way Goran Dragic was terrific and the Nets going small was a key great Jason minutes. Tatum you cannot you cannot get your sixth foul on a play like that where you're trying to inbound and now the Nets had their chance and this was a great play by uh, Kevin Durant to find Kyrie Marcus Smart silly play gambling right there and now the Nets are definitely in the game. Down just three with the ball. A minute and a half left. Kevin Durant. The runner goes down just one. And, and this was, and now Boston had not scored for nearly a minute and a half. And then Jalen Brown gets the baseline. That was a huge bucket for them with Tatum on the bench with six fouls. This place came alive. And then Kevin Durant misses the three. Marcus Smart gathers. 
veteran move here by him, slowing everything down. The Celtics started to get out, but he slowed everybody down, and then Jalen Brown misses. And then Marcus Smart, you know, makes a pay. I get it. He's trying to be aggressive, but you foul Kevin Durant. All right, the Nets can't get a three, but now Kevin right. Durant is going to the free throw line to make it a one-point game. M misses the second one. Now it's two points. And what's going on here? The Nets have to foul. And Kyrie's got to be an all-out sprint. And here you have to foul Al Horford. You cannot let him get the putback. Offensive rebounds the entire series. Advantage, Boston. And then one more time now for the Brooklyn Nets. They're down four. Listen, at this point, as long as you don't foul, it's essentially over. Kevin Durant can't make the shot. And then you get the foul by Patty Mills. And there's your ball game. Ten offensive rebounds for the Boston Celtics as they go on to win this one, 116 to 112. We take a look at the stars that Frank just mentioned. Jalen Brown, he was easy to guess. He either had 22 or 23 points yeah. in games one through four. Tatum falls one point shy of tying Giannis Antetokounmpo for having the most 30-point games against the Brooklyn Nets. And again, a key point. It's a six-point game when he fouls out with 2.48 to go. And you're thinking, where is the offense going to come from Boston? But they found a way. Jalen Brown, obviously, and then the putback by Al Horford. And you think about this season, Las Vegas having the Nets as the favorite to win a championship. Who would have ever thought there's only one team in the first round of the playoffs this year that got swept, and it's the Brooklyn Nets. You know, I saw two, two people that we know before the game started, Ian O'Connor, who we both know, and also Michael Grady, obviously. And I told them both, I don't see Kevin Durant going out and and not having yeah. a huge game trying to get his team back into the series and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, it was a struggle for him all series long but today I think he got a lot more aggressive obviously seeing those shots go down early was big the play that's going to stick out for him is going to be the free throw at the end right. which could have made it a one point game and again you're playing the foul game but I thought what helped Kevin Durant was Steve Nash going small Andre Drummond did not play in the second half we thought at halftime there would be an adjustment there and by going small with having Goran Dragic out there I thought that game, you know, it spread the court a lot more, opened the lanes up for both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. And let's not forget, Frank, this was a four-point win for the Celtics, and the Nets missed 12 free throws. Yeah. And, and how about Nicholas Claxton? Right. They actually went to Hacker Claxton yeah. in that one instance. To his credit, after missing, what was it, 10 in a row, yeah. finally hit that next one. Boston decided not to do that. Free throws, so important. But I agree with you. You knew Kevin Durant would go would go out fighting, and that's exactly what happened tonight. He did go out fighting. 39 points tonight, pushing his average up over 26 points per game. Uh, close to 39% from the field and 33% from downtown, but 21 turnovers. That's very telling. He did say when he handles the ball, especially in the playoffs, he's going to have turnovers, but that's a lot of turnovers. Yeah, he had 19 field goals coming into the game, 13 tonight, so he finished the series with 32 field goals. So give Boston a lot of credit. It's a terrific defensive team. They're obviously well coached. Think about the difference last year to this year. Boston looked like a dead team walking. I get it. They didn't have Jalen Brown, but the Nets absolutely walked all over them, and here we are 10 months later, and the Brooklyn Nets are getting swept by a team that's clearly on the rise. I'm not ready to give up on the Brooklyn Nets yet because you got Kevin Durant there, right. but things absolutely absolutely have to change. It's got to be better in the regular season because all that stuff matters. It mattered for Boston, and they're the team that won four to four games here. All right, Frank, a disappointing end to this season for the Brooklyn Nets. They get swept by the Boston Celtics. Let's get the final thoughts on this one from our broadcast team, Ryan Rucco and Sarah Kustak. Thanks a lot, Chris. Uh, Sarah, obviously, great disappointment here with game four and with the season. A lot to recap when it comes to this net season and the way things ended. But before we delve into their issues, with this series specifically, the Boston Celtics showed they are a true championship contender. They clearly outclassed the Nets. They are the far better team, and they showed it all series long. Yeah, and, and it was a balance for as much as we put focus on the performances throughout of Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant um, and just what the Celtics were able to do defensively against them. I think it is the entirety of this Boston Celtics team that was so impressive, how they approach the game, the level of energy and intensity they play at, but also the poise and the patience. And they have systems on both sides of the floor, and you could tell that they have a level of continuity uh, that will allow them 
to continue to really be a, a powerful um, player in this postseason. But overall, for Brooklyn, you know, it, there's a lot of things to look at. There's a lot of layers for it. Um, but they were up against a very, very strong opponent, which they knew. But I don't think any of us would have anticipated it being a sweep and going the way that it did after, especially that that heartbreaker in game one, how close it seemed being on the road, um, but then everything that came after. Look, this Nets franchise has been on a constant ascent since Sean Marks took over. Even last year, obviously greatly disappointing losing in Game 7 to the Bucks, but there were real reasons for that. James Harden on one leg and Kyrie Irving injured. It still felt like, okay, this is the year. There is no way to sugar sugarcoat this. This is a massive disappointment this season. To get swept in the first round for a team that was a title favorite, Sarah, this has to make the organization really examine everything moving forward. This is a critical offseason. You don't get stars like this in your prime too often. And really, Kevin Durant is obviously the piece. Everything else needs to be questioned and looked at and examined because you do not want to waste the prime of Kevin Durant. And there's a lot of mitigating factors and circumstances, but it's going to be hard for them to see this season as anything other than a waste. Yeah, and, and there was a lot of factors that went into that. And you, you look at the injuries, you look at COVID, the protocol. There are so many things that obviously created a a strong sense of adversity through every turn it felt like month by month for the season and so you point to some of those reasons why the Nets had to just fight their way to even get in the playoffs and how they played throughout the final stretch of the season being in that play-in tournament and then getting to this point and, and being the lower seed and just how that all played out but I think to, to your point of what this organization needs to really look at consider the roster the personnel how everyone fits together because at the end of the day no you don't have Joe Harris because he was injured and obviously without Ben Simmons. But overall, you did have, for the most part, the totality of your lineup, of your roster, and come away with an outcome like this. So there is going to be a lot of question marks and a lot of things to examine and take a look at with how you come back with a player of Kevin Durant's caliber and put him in a position where he feels like he has a legitimate chance to once again compete for a title next it, year. And here's the thing. Look.